Hey guys, how you doing? Top of the morning to you. Put a little salt palmetto tincture, you guys out there, in your uh, tea. Put a couple droppers full of that in there too. So, how you guys doing? Uh, Miss Daisy said a while ago, uh, "Where are you going? Where are you? What are you up to?" I said the same thing I do every day. Bees. She said, my God, that's an, that's like an addiction. And I said, yeah, it, uh, it is. It's an addiction. If you like something, do it. I mean, if you're not hurting anybody, do it. She says, uh, yeah, well, it's a good, you got a good, I guess that's a good addiction, she said. Not like your friend. I said, what friend are you talking about? She said, the, the big, ugly, the big, ugly black man with one eye. I said, oh, man, don't talk to, about him like that. I said, he's a nice guy. I said, what addiction are you talking about? She said, you know what I'm talking about. I said, oh, yeah, the dog track and hookers. She said, yeah. I said, well, it's good that uh, I don't have that addiction. She said, yes, it is for your safety. I said, what? what? Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about uh, me thinking about uh, Uncle Guido. She said, yeah, if you went down that road, all, of that, all I'd have to do is make one phone call. I said, man, you're making me feel warm and fro fuzzy today. Sorry I got you triggered. She said, I'm not triggered. I'm just saying. See, this is what happens, guys, when you marry into an Italian crime family, you know? You're in it for life, you know? You either go out in a pine box or you uh, swim with the fishes, you know? One or the other. Anyone. She said, how long, how long have you had this addiction? I said, it goes back, way, way back in time. I said, I was a little bitty kid, little bitty kid, and I was always... Getting in trouble. Can you imagine me guys getting in trouble? Being a pain, you know? Mom would say, she. Mom had a trick. We lived in a, in a place that had a lot of horses around and a lot of clover fields, right? Horse, uh, horse pasture and stuff. And in that pasture was a lot of four, four, uh, clover. So mom says she got the bright idea one day. She says, uh, why don't you quit being a pain and go out there and um, there's a clover out there that's the one with the white flowers and there's bees all over those flowers so be careful but look at those that green petal and she said the majority of them have three leaves but you look for the one that has four leaves she said four leaves yes mom so I went out there and sat right down in there with the bees. She said, now be careful them bees. Don't, they won't bother you. They won't bother you, but don't mess with them. Just let them do their job. And find me them four leaf clovers. I'll show you what we're gonna do with those. Those are good luck, she said, right? So uh, off I go. And sure enough, I hunted and hunted. You know, when you're a little kid, you get really sharp eyes. You can pick them up pick stuff up like that and I'm going through there and I found one I ran into the house showed it to her and she said all right this is great she opened up a book she had a book she put that leaf in there and she closed it up we'll wait a few days she said now flatten out nice and then we'll 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 have a nice uh, good luck charm and so I was being a pain in the ass I think some more there and she said God uh, Go on out, find some more. Well, I went out there and I found a bunch of them. But I was sitting around. Then you get, you know how kids are; they get bored. So I was looking at those bees, and I'd poke at the bees. You know, and they didn't do nothing; they just fly off. So then I came up to one, I grabbed it right all over the whole flower and all. I had it in my hand. And before I opened my hand, that thing stung me. So I'm crying like a little baby, which I was. And went running back in the house. Mom says, You grabbed one of those bees, didn't you? 
I said, yes. So she ran my hand under cold water, got the sting out. I told you, but you don't listen. When I tell you things, you gotta, you know, listen. I get it now, you know. I was getting it then, see. So anyway, so that went on. And then I'm in, I'm in elementary school, clowning around. Clowning around. Can you imagine old Steve-O clowning around? I was clowning around. Class clown. We're out on the playground. Well, before that, before that, uh, that little story, we're going down the road, Dad and I, and, and we lived in an area that had a lot of orange trees. And back in those days, early days, in the, uh, in the 50s, there were beehives everywhere because there were orange trees. Their beekeepers were around. I don't know how many, but they were around. And you had swarms. You'd be going along and swarms would be coming across the road. I was in the car with Dad. I said, what's that? He said, that's a bee swarm. And it just went right in front of the car. It went over and gone. I said, wow. I said, why do they... Why are they swarming? He said, I don't know anything about bees. He says, I don't know anything about them. I've heard, he said, I've just heard that if they get too many bees in a hive, that's what they do. They just pack up and leave. I said, well, what happened to the bees, the hive they left? He said, I don't have a clue. Oh, okay. So then in elementary school, now we're going to move over to elementary school, I'm on the playground, and all of us kids are out there running around going crazy, you know, all jacked up on sugar, like, you know, all good American kids are, just running nuts, got candy in your pocket all day, running nuts, and uh, I'm out on the playground, and all of a sudden I hear the kids screaming, they're just screaming, and I look, see what they're screaming at, to see if the boogeyman's coming. And here's this huge swarm, huge. This black cloud is coming, and the kids are just scrambling. And here I am, right beside a little orange tree that was probably, I'm going to say, six, eight feet tall at the most. And I'm standing in front of it. I'm, the tree's here, I'm here, and here comes this mass, black mass. So I kind of just white-knuckled it. I was amazed. I was just amazed that this thing is coming at me, right? And I really wasn't afraid, for whatever reason. I just wasn't afraid of the bees. I knew what they did. I knew if you grabbed them, you're going to get stung. You know, I, I understood that. And... The kids just scrambled off the playground. They hauled butt. They're gone. I'm the only, I'm the only dummy out there. And here they come. The bees came right at me. I said, "Am I?" I'm thinking to myself, "I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die." And all of a sudden, the bees came right, and they just came around me. I don't even think one touched me. They just came in. They came around me, and they landed. Right here, my shoulder height, right on a tree limb, right here, beside me, right? They just came in and started forming this huge mass. So the kids are all over there, screaming at me, Hurry! Steve, run, run, run! Come quick, come quick! And I just stood there, well, being the clown that I am, I had to, I had to crank them up a little bit, right? So I took my hand, now. Well, Mind this. I had no clue as a kid what that's going to happen. I had no clue. And I took my hand and I said, if I go slow, I can probably put my hand in there. So I went up first, touched them. No, they didn't do nothing. So I started my hand in there and I put my hand right in that huge mass of bees. Now this, this mass of bees was probably as big as a, as a basketball. And I put my hand right in there and the kids went crazy. But I got, you know, a little charge. That's what I was looking for, that little charge out of them. Well, here comes a teacher. She comes out of there. She, her hair is on fire, guys. Her hair is on fire. She comes up. She gets about 40 or 50, I don't know. See, it was a, quite a ways from me. And she's screaming like her hair is on fire. Okay. 
Get over here. Get over here now. And I just sit there smiling at her with my hand in there. And she's still screaming at me. She's about to lose her mind, guys. She is about to lose it. And I slowly pulled my hand out. I'm thinking to myself, I better get over there quick. This lady's going to, something bad's going to happen. So I pulled my hand out real slow. I've got bees just hanging all over, and the kids are going nuts. But I'm liking it. I'm not getting stung at all. And I just took my hand, and I jiggled it a little bit. And they all flew off, went back into the club and thing. You get over here now, Dennis! Get over here! <coughs> so, <laughs> so I go over there. This lady grabs my arm, guys, and likes to yank it, almost yanked it out of the socket. Yeah, guys, she, she likes to jerk my arm out of the socket. You're going to the office. You have a listening problem. <clears throat> well, I've had a listening problem my whole life, guys. Come on, let's get real. So, uh, I was thinking to myself, that's what my mom says. You got a listening problem, you know? So anyway, I go in there and she's dragging me into this friggin' uh, principal's office. Now here's this lady, this principal, obviously if you get that job, I don't know what it's like today with the left, the liberal nut jobs, but it may be really bad now, but this lady, she was just calm and cool and everything. She said, this kid here is a problem. I told him to get in here. He's out there, got his hand in a beehive. So, she had to de-escalate the situation, the principal. She said, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of this boy. You go back to your class, ma'am. So, the lady leaves. She looked her, got one more look on me as she's going out the door, like, disgust, you know. So, she shuts the door. Principal lady, she looked at me, and I'm sitting there like a little dog, puppy dog with my tail between my legs. She says, um... You were uh, showing off a little bit, weren't you, out there? And I kind of gave a little smirk, and then she had a little smirky smile, and I came back with a little smirky smile, right? She says, uh, you weren't afraid of them bees? I said, no, I don't, they weren't going to bother me. I knew that. Somehow I knew it. I said, I didn't know what they were or not. But I said, I didn't feel like they were, you know, going to hurt me. And she had a smile on her face, because I think she knew a little bit of something about bees. You know, being a principal of a school, you know, you would have thought she would have maybe a little biology class, you know. So anyway. Anyway, so. She says, well, I'll tell you, I, I don't want you to go back to your class just yet. We're going to leave you in here, and uh, maybe that teacher will think I punished you. She said, you're not going to do that again, are you? I said, no, ma'am. No, ma I've learned my lesson. I'm not doing that again. I was, I was like you said, just showing off. She said, yeah, I, I know. I know. She said, you, wanna, you want something to drink? I got some Coca-Cola in the refrigerator. You know, like I needed more sugar, right? She said, I said, yeah, I'd like to have that. So she said, I'd like to have one, too. So she went over and got it. <laughs> So, so her and I had a, a little, uh, yeah, we had a little happy fizzy drink right there in her office. That was really something. Yeah, guys, so that's how it all happened. Now you got the whole story on old Steve-O and the, and, the, and the bee addiction. So anyway. Um, so I don't have any bee work today. But I had a little bit yesterday. I, uh, I text Matthew, he's a queen breeder to my north, I've known him for quite a few years now, and a heck of a good guy, great guy. He's running like 300 colonies, and he's a queen breeder, and a uh, honey producer. I asked him if he's pollinating at all, and he said, no, he said, I'm going to, I may split, I'm trying to weigh it out. He said, I don't know if I, I'm going to make more money selling queens or am I going to make more money selling honey. 
So I got 300 colonies. I could bust everything today and make 600 colonies. And uh, but anyway, I asked him when he was going to start grafting, and that was that was 12 days ago. He said, "I'm starting my first graft tomorrow morning." He said. And I didn't even ask him for queens because I'm was started up. I figured my operation would be going here, and uh, so I didn't even ask him for. He said, "I'll let you know if I have any extras." Well, ten. He said that'll be ten days from now. So he called me or texted me. He said, "I have 35 extra cells if you would like some." And so I got thinking about it, and I said, "You know that that thing." Uh, didn't make it. They didn't make cells that I could grab from, whatever. I asked him too, do you dry or wet graft? He said, I dry graft. I dry graft everything. Been dry grafting forever. I said, you know, a lot of guys do. I said, I always thought we better made a little better queen if we wet graft. He said, he's like, nah, no. So, anyway. I call, I called him up and I said, uh, I'm going to head your way. I said, I got beehives out here. They're about to explode. And I need to reduce the numbers on them. And I need to get a jump start on my queen operation. I said, are those things going to be like rattlesnakes? He said, nah, these are nice, gentle Italian bees. I said, I'm on my way. So I got up there. And uh, he gave me a good price on them. She, great price on them. He had extras. I don't know. He was going to probably just, he didn't have, he didn't have a home for them apparently and then he was going to graft the next day again so he said I'll have another run off of these things uh, coming up so anyway I went up there it's not far he's just lived just up above the wiki watchy mermaid show up there and uh, so I went up there and got him so here's what I got here's what we got guys Got a, I got 18 of them. There's 15 here, and I've got three in the back. There's extra cups back there, uh, you know. But uh, yeah, I got I got three back there, and I got 15 here. So he said they'll hatch today or tomorrow. So uh, they'll hatch today or tomorrow. So when they hatch, I'm, I'm going to have to get busy. I'm going to have to get busy and get out here and start making up. I've got, I've got enough colonies in reserve here to start loading up some twos. Uh, I'll probably go into with some twos. We'll load them up, and I'm going to try to direct release, uh, uh, direct release on these. Uh, I'm going to see how that goes. I may direct release all these, but what I'll do is take a little spritz bottle like this and um, put some warm sugar water in it and maybe a, a little bit of vanilla extract and uh, what I may do is set them up one day as soon as these hatch I'll go make them up put them in lockdown then I'll come out the next day that'll give them 24 hours to realize they're queenless then I'll open them up little puff of smoke grab my spritzer bottle hit them sugar water get them a little sticky take my virgin release her let her crawl out as soon as she crawls out give her a little spritz and let her crawl down in and then i'll leave them locked up for about additional two days in there and then uh open the wire on the front entry and let them crawl let's see how it goes i told matthew what i was going to do he said i he said, I haven't had much luck with virgins. He said, I put in cells. And uh, a lot of the commercial guys, they don't, you know, a lot of them use, a lot of them use cell, cell protectors, you know, and some, most, majority of them don't. They just open the frame up and stick that cell right on in there in the sidewall of that thing and walk away. We'll have experimented quite a bit. I have had very good luck. I have not with I haven't done this a lot with virgins. 
Uh, I was using the cages, as you remember last season. I was using these introduction cages and leaving them in there for like three days. And you put this right over some brood, emerging brood, if you got any. But uh, I had about 50% success rate with that. So I had excellent results years past. I've told you this story before with uh, mated queens. They have a different hormonal, you know, they got more hormone smell to them. And the bees like that. They accept that when they're queenless. And what I did was the same thing. I would grab bees, maybe one day ahead, let them, put them in a lockdown or move them to another yard. And I would open that hive, spritz them with sugar water, grab my mated queen, open the door, let her crawl out, pop her with a little, with just a little mist, and she'd crawl down in the hole. I think I got 100% with that deal, guys. So it'll be a fun experiment to see how this will work. Then you guys will know, okay? All right, guys, that's it for today. Little story time for you, and, uh, yep, a little, a little bit of bee addic addiction, okay? And try to stay away from uh, Uncle Guido. Let's keep him happy. All right, guys, I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.